All right, good afternoon. Thank you everyone for being here today. Um, I particularly want to thank members of our community for being here. Uh, the National Weather Service has reported that the Seattle and King County area can experience snow this afternoon, tomorrow, this weekend, and next week. We're also expecting colder than expected uh, temperatures next week. And we really want to emphasize again that we want our communities to be prepared both for the cold and for the snow. Um, we also have had some of our wettest months, so we know that we are feeling the impact of our climate. Um, I also want to thank particularly for uh, council members who are here today. Did they disappear to the back? Oh, there they are right there. Thank you, Council Member Herbold and Alex is behind me. Um, you know, many of us spent some time in this room last winter. Um, I wore this jacket to remind everyone. Um, I was just coming out of surgery myself. People remember I was supposed to take three weeks off. I had my surgery, I think, on a Thursday and the snow started on a Sunday. We want to make sure we're ready as a city um, because not only do we think that snow can come, but it could bring ice, uh, freezing rain, cold temperatures. There's a few things. We have Sam Zimbabwe, the Department of Transportation, is going to talk after I am, and then Barb is going to talk about our emergency preparedness overall. We have members of our various cabinets here to answer questions as well. I want to emphasize a couple of things. Number one is if we hit the snow, snow period, Check on your neighbors if you can. Um, we know there's a lot of people who can't make it out of their homes easily, either because they have disabilities or they're older. Make sure that you check on them. And also, if you can, help them shovel their sidewalks. We did a great job responding last year, and we're going to talk about what our snow response will be as a community and I think as an interdepartment governments. But one thing that we know is our sidewalks are the way that people can get around in this city. And many people didn't understand that homeowners, apartment owners have the obligation to keep their sidewalks clear. So if you see that snow, do your job. And if you can't, get people to help you. Um, if you don't have your snow shovel yet, maybe you should go get one. If you don't have salt, it might be a good time to check on it. Check on those things like, do your, do your flashlights have batteries? We hope we don't lose power, but if we get freezing rain, that can be death for our electricity lines. So check your flashlight, recharge your electronics, have some candles and warm blankets. Also, we have Jason Johnson here. Obviously, there's, we have a number of people experiencing homelessness. We have plans to bring people in out of the cold, and we'll be able to surge efforts depending on what the nature of, of this ends up being. Um, we have almost 70 million square feet in the city of Seattle, and we have 35 snow plows at any given time. And so our plan is to focus on what are the things we need to plow first to keep the city moving, keep buses moving, keep schools in operation if we can, and to make sure that people can get to and from emergency places like hospital. Don't expect your neighborhood will be plowed immediately. We will do what we can, but we know we have to prioritize it. And Sam will explain we have a whole system in place. Uh, I am confident that we can be ready again. I think we performed well. But again, it relies on everybody doing their part. And sometimes that's checking on neighbors, making sure that sidewalks are passable for those people who aren't as abled as other people, checking on seniors. Um, if you see people experiencing homelessness, we will have lines available to call to get people to bring them inside so that people can stay safe. Uh, but the number one thing is we don't know what's going to hit us. Half the time they predict it, it doesn't come. Um, but we have been experiencing, you know, climate change. And we expect this winter that we will have some snows. We had the snowiest February ever on record in Seattle last year. Um, and if the snows start now, we want to make sure that people know that we are ready, we've got plans, um, and that most of all, be patient. You know, snows don't come that often, but when they come, they, we're stuck for a while. So be patient. If you need help, we'll have ways for people to reach out. And one reason that we want to make sure that we, we have the ability to get to emergencies first. Um, and so with that, I want to give you Sam Zimbabwe, head of the Seattle Department of Transportation. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Sam Zimbabwe, director of the Seattle Department of Transportation. Um, so during a, a severe storm, SDOT crews and our partner crews from the Department of Parks and Recreation 
uh, the Seattle Public Utilities are ready to work 24-7 to clear the city's most critical streets for buses and emergency services. Uh, last winter, about 350 city workers worked back-to-back -back shifts 24 hours a day for nine days in a row to keep the city moving uh, during the storms. We've updated our winter response plan to address some of the challenges we saw and include some of the successful uh, tactics that we used for the first time last winter. Uh, as, as the mayor said, our top priorities will be protecting public safety and make, making sure people have reliable access to transit. We've worked with hospitals and emergency services to ensure that critical safety routes are cleared first. We've also worked with Metro, and, and Terry White is here uh, to address challenges with transit from last winter and ensure that their snow routes are synced up with our plow routes. Um, we also also want to remind everybody that light rail continues to be running on a different pace due to Connect 2020 efforts and Connect 2020 construction. We've worked with Sound Transit to do everything that we can to make sure that, that Sound Transit can be successful moving people despite their uh, construction uh, constraints right now. Um, we're working to clear uh, bright, protected bike lanes, clear fallen trees if that happens as well, and make sure that everybody can move around the city no matter how they're getting around. Um, we want to really emphasize, as Mayor Durkin said, stay safe. Don't drive if you don't have to during a snowstorm. If you must drive, please slow down and be careful. Watch out for others. Leave plenty of room for snow plows, for other vehicles. Make sure your car is safe for winter weather driving and pay attention to road closure signs. Those are there for a reason, to keep people safe. Um, to reiterate the call to action around sidewalks, when it snows, we're ready to deploy our crews to dozens of pedestrian overpasses, stairways and curb ramps that are not next to homes and businesses. We can't be everywhere at once. With over 2,400 miles of sidewalks in, uh, in Seattle, we depend on the public to do your part and clear the sidewalks and curb ramps in front of your homes and businesses. Clearing the sidewalks isn't just the law, it's also the right thing to do to make sure that everybody can travel safely during a snowstorm, especially people who are blind, disabled, or have a harder time getting around. I want to thank folks from Rooted in Rights. Uh, we, did, we made a lot of effort, put a video out um, working with Rooted in Rights to make sure people understand exactly what the human impact of, of this is for everybody. Uh, if you don't have a shovel or salt, buy your supplies now. If you think you have a shovel or salt, check on those supplies and, and head to the store if you haven't bought them, uh, if, you, if, you, if you misplaced them. Um, talk to your neighbors now to find out who might need help in your community and work together to support one another uh, and come up with a plan to ensure that all sidewalks on your block are kept clear so that everyone can get around safe, safely. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Barb Graff uh, from Emergency Management here in Seattle. Thank you, Sam. Um, first and foremost, we encourage everyone to stay informed. We have been staying uh, in touch with the National Weather Service with their daily webinars and conference calls and spot forecasts, but we need you to do the same thing because the models don't always rely or don't, don't um, agree, and they, the weather forecast changes from time to time. Uh, two days ago, we were looking at potentially 1 to 12 inches of snow. That's changed drastically as of today. So stay informed. Talk, you know, tune in to TV and radio. Listen to your favorite forecaster, uh, but these things change on a daily basis. The other ways to stay informed are to sign up for alert.seattle.gov. Um, and so if you go to that website, alert.seattle.gov, you can actually get information on utility disruptions, traffic operations, and other, other safety situations that are happening within the city. There are regional programs as well, like Alert um, uh, King County, if you'd like to sign up for those. There's a smart 911 app that you can download to your phone, and if you do that, you can actually get uh, geolocated information about weather alerts. So look for that, that smart 911 one app. Um, as you've heard, I can't reiterate enough, have the supplies now that you think you might even maybe need. I think many people remember what the experience was like at grocery stores and hardware stores in February. Don't wait until the first quarter of an inch of snow is on the sidewalks already. Go ahead and do your shopping now. And in addition to what you've heard from the mayor and from Sam about checking on your neighbors, check on your neighbors whether they need supplies in advance as well. I'll just also reiterate something that we have experienced in the past in very cold weather when there were power outages, not that we anticipate them, 
but make sure that people understand that it's not safe to bring in barbecues, generators, and other non-rated outdoor um, types of equipment. It can cause carbon monoxide buildup, which is colorless, odorless, and you don't know you've been affected until you've been affected. Um, finally, I'm going to say it for the third time and not the last, please help shovel the sidewalks. Uh, snow is charming in the first eighth of an inch and then it's alarming for an awful lot of people after that. And your, your goal is a 36 inch width worth of shoveling. It's good exercise, it's a great way to meet one another, it's a great way to help everyone in our community be able to get to where they need to get. Thanks for your help on all this. Mayor? Thank you very much, Barb. Uh, any questions from anyone? We were here last year, kind of deja vu, the same spot um, before the February snow again. But uh, so, do you think maybe from that experience, you're a lot more better prepared? You know, we I think that um, both the city and and intergovernment did a really good job last time. But it also gave us the chance to see what we didn't do well. And I think that one of the things you heard the theme here today was shovel your sidewalk. Um, I think one of the things that people don't realize is that's their responsibility outside their, their building or their home. Um, and for us, for many people, for able-bodied people, it's just a convenience, right? And it's harder to walk or you decide not to walk. For people having disabilities, it may mean they're trapped. And so I think we really have to make sure that people are looking after one another. Again, if we do get snow and when we do get snow, we will publish a, a range of numbers. One of the most important ones is going to be what number people can call if people are experiencing homelessness and you see someone unsheltered. We want to bring people inside to keep them safe. Um, the Parks Department and SDOT and others last year did just a terrific job of standing up cold winter shelters, keeping them operating, serving meals, community came, anyone who could walk to those shelters did and, and helped out. So I think that we learned that number one is we had to have a, a plan in advance on how to deal with our unsheltered population, but also be much more cognizant of the city that, that sidewalks sometimes become unpassable and if you let it go too long then they become icy. And what, with the temperatures dipping into the 20s, I believe late this week and into next week, what are the plans for, for those living on the streets? For, for the we will open cold winter shelters and have more shelter capacity. We're going to be watching the weather really closely. Um, Jason Johnson is here from HSD. J yeah. Jason, do you want to address that briefly? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, Jason Johnson with the Human Services Department. Uh, we, every winter, uh, during the cold winter uh, weather months, uh, we extend capacity of shelter availability. So we have uh, a, about 85 additional shelter beds that are always open during the winter months. Um, knowing that this uh, uh, cold weather, uh, especially dangerous low temperatures are coming, uh, we have uh, partnered with Seattle Center and will be opening 100 beds, 100 additional beds at the Exhibition Hall starting Sunday night at 7 p.m. Uh, how long that shelter is open, uh, we still need to determine uh, um, and we'll be watching the uh, weather forecast very closely. Um, but it will be open uh, starting Sunday night, it'll be open Monday night, it'll be open Tuesday night, and we'll uh, continue to monitor weather patterns uh, to see how long that, we uh, that shelter needs to be extended. That's an overnight only shelter, so that space is only open from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, we have uh, the armory, uh, which is right next door, uh, which is open during the day, where people can go if they need to uh, stay warm during the, during the day. Uh, we also uh, plan to continue all city operations, and so there are other city uh, uh, facilities, such as community centers, uh, uh, city hall libraries and such, uh, that we invite people to come in uh, out of the cold. Is there enough capacity, do you think, for everyone to get inside and keep warm both day and night? I think so, and that's something we'll want to continue to monitor. Uh, if this is a uh, storm that has, uh, uh, you know, freezing temperatures and a lot of snow for a long uh, duration of time, uh, then we'll have to enter into a different phase of operations and, and really start considering uh, opening other facilities. Uh, I found but. This on the web. Right now, we are uh, looking at a uh, uh, hundred bed capacity uh, on top of the uh, 85 uh, additional shelter beds that are open during the winter months, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how that goes. What are you doing to reach people and encampments uh, and let them know about this? You know, how how many days a week is enough? 
Yeah, so we, um, as part of our uh, normal uh, severe weather operations, uh, we make two asks of our ser service providers. Uh, one, for anyone operating shelter, we ask that they expand capacity wherever possible. So that's making spaces uh, available in doorways and hallways, I mean, really doing everything they can to uh, open additional capacity in their current programs. Uh, we also have uh, uh, and fund an outreach continuum. Uh, those are uh, eight outreach providers in the city uh, in addition to the navigation team. Uh, and we ask that uh, those teams uh, operate now letting people know that the uh, cold weather is coming and to please go indoors. So we're asking our, our outreach operators to get as many people indoors as possible. Jason, one of the issues with temporary shelter for cold weather is that folks who are outside may have belongings, tents, things like that that they don't want to abandon for a short period and then come back and have nothing after the fact, um, considering that they're unlikely to get into housing through these short-term shelters. How do you get around that issue when people are in potentially dangerous weather conditions? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it's difficult, but one thing I appreciate about the exhibition hall is it does offer uh, space. So we open that, uh, those 100 beds uh, as low barrier shelter. Uh, people are welcome to bring their pets uh, and, and their belongings. Uh, so we don't want that to be a barrier to them coming inside during dangerously low temperatures. Can I add something? Sure. And we saw last year, even as with the emergency snow response, the navigation team and others were working very hard to affirmatively bring people inside and people found their way to the two community centers that were open. A number of people arrived and, and realized that they would forget things like medicines. So we had systems in place to help go back to wherever their belongings were, collect what they needed, medicines and, and things like that. So we, we can't collect all of the property, but we try to do make sure that the people can bring with them what they need and are in a constant communication with people on that. Can one of you lay out what the law is specifically for clearing the sidewalks? What, so, in the city of Seattle, the proper, the abutting property owner has the obligation to keep their sidewalk clear. Um, and so, obviously, with, with depending on whether it's an apartment building or a house and who lives in the house, people aren't aware of that obligation. So, we have been doing outreach this year to make sure that people know their obligation. And it's all why, why you've heard everyone up here say it. Um, is you know you've got to clear the sidewalk in front of you and if you have someone in your community or neighborhood that can't help them do it um, we're all in this together when the snow comes down it's it's not just getting us ready for the battle in Milwaukee and Green Bay it really is a community thing the impacts are felt through the whole community but the people who feel them first are the most vulnerable neighbors we have and so we really have to focus our efforts on helping people. Any specific things for Mr. Zimbabwe about um, what you said, some lessons learned from last year that are being implemented this time around? Sure. Um, so a couple of things. Um, one is on the sidewalk clearing um, front, we've uh, developed ways for our uh, public, our street use inspectors to go out and actually proactively look at uh, look at sidewalks, um, focusing on our arterial routes, getting people to and from transit, and focusing on our urban villages and, and urban uh, centers, um, that we can start to notify property owners of their responsibility if we see that people aren't taking their, their uh, responsibility seriously. Um, the other is that we, we also have done a lot of work to map out all of our protected bike lanes and, and develop a more uh, comprehensive plan for uh, plowing our protected bike lanes. And then some of it I already talked about, um, our, our continued better connections with Metro around uh, snow, uh, snow routing and snow uh, service needs, and then also with Seattle Public Schools around uh, our communication and coordination around um, access to schools and, and um, the, the timing of, of and, and sort of where, where needs might be to, to um, provide access to schools. So if you give notifications, let's say a homeowner doesn't comply, could those notifications potentially include citations or fines if they're not followed? Yes. So um, the first step is going to be a notification, and if that is, if, if we don't see uh, response and, and clearance of the sidewalk, we can follow that up with with fines, with with violations. What's the dollar amount, and is that new? Have you ever done that before? Um, it's not new. It's always been the requirement. Um, the uh, it is a it is a street use citation. It is a normal citation for not um, doing what you need to do in in, in uh, street use. We have. I think it's it, it last year uh, the the duration of the snow and 
Um, the length of time even after the snow stopped to get sidewalks cleared and, and opened really um, highlighted for us the need to more proactively uh, get out there and, and remind people of their responsibilities. And what's the dollar amount? You said? I believe it's, it, well, it's, it, it, it escalates. So if, if, if at first you don't succeed, we'll try try again. Um, we're, so I think it starts at $125 uh, f after that first um, uh, notification that you need to get into compliance. So it's not, it's not, it doesn't start with $125, it starts with a notification. Uh, and this is consistent with every other violation of, of um, public space requirements uh, in the in the city. So regarding street plowing, um, it sounds like you're trying to get better connections to buses and schools. Um, is there any additional equipment that you've been able to get, or is it really just a matter of figuring out how to prioritize that? Yeah, so uh, you know, the, the level of equipment that we had last year, the level of salt and, um, and equipment was really enough to get those uh, gold and emerald routes plowed. We, we published the map of um, the, the routes that we do plow, uh, focusing on arterial routes, getting people to and from hospitals, getting people to and from transit, and making sure transit can, can uh, move. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't radically changed the, that, um, the level of plowing that we are going to do. Um, we've made some tweaks here and there just to make sure that we're pro providing access to those critical facilities. I'm just trying to understand better what you what you learned from and what you've changed. Because yeah, I think so. I think uh, the the plowing operations and our ability to deploy uh, our crews to clear overpasses and uh, curb ramps and and uh, things like that was largely pretty successful. There's been some changes at the margins of that of exactly how we communicate and and coordinate our own work. Um, uh, so there's a, not not radical changes from what we did last year. That part was largely successful. Where we felt like we had some challenges was in um, in uh, making sure we had sidewalks cleared uh, throughout the city, uh, making sure we were communicating with each other, with other agencies around um, school access and things like that. Sorry to belabor the point, but uh, <laughs> there were school there were classes canceled last year because the roads weren't plowed. So, in schools that were closed because the roads weren't plowed. So, do you prioritize that? I mean, what are you, what are you trying to say? Sure. So, so I think one thing that, that has been very helpful for us is really good close coordination with Seattle Public Schools about exactly what is leading to um, their decisions about, about school closures and the timing of those decisions so that we can have good communication. Um, and, and I think, you know, for, for uh, Seattle Public Schools, it's an all-on, all-off situation. And e either all schools are going to be open or all schools are going to be closed. Um, and so we've, we've done a very good job working with them on exactly what they would need to get uh, schools open and make sure that we understand uh, where their pain points are and how we, how we uh, support each other in communicating around that. This afternoon, <clears throat> as we speak, what is the status of the plows and the crews right now where are they and what are they doing sure so um we've started to uh bring people uh put people on call and plan to deploy if the current predictions hold uh the, the current um weather forecast hold we would start to uh deploy people out sunday evening as well but we've got people on call over the weekend if if uh circumstances change um equipment is ready our our uh snow fighting, uh, you know, plows, salt, we're, we're fully stocked and ready to go. Do so you have any plans to pre-treat any streets? It'll depend a little bit on the predictions and, and exactly what we see, what our tactics are, uh, and, and um, you know, again, what we, from what the predictions are right now, it looks like Sunday evening is when we could see the first chances of, of real uh, accumulation. Uh, it's, still not a whole lot this Sunday evening into Monday, but enough to, to potentially affect things. So we've, we're, we're trying to put people in place to be successful um, uh, on Sunday evening into Monday. But, but we're also ready if some of those uh, conditions change. All right, we're gonna close up. Any more questions? Yes, one for Mr. White about uh, Metro. Just any specifics about how you've changed since last year or anything new to people uh, Terry White, King County Metro. Um, I, let me say this, um, metrowinter.com, that is our best improvement, it's our communication. We created a single point for all folks to go to. Uh, that's where you can start. 
Uh, and I would ask that all of our writers and non-writers who are about to become writers go to this site, take a look, um, see what services are available in your area, see what alternatives are available, uh, maybe go out and test out the services so that you're familiar. Uh, and then, as with all of our folks here that we've been working with, um, we have been working to improve our coordination. Uh, we, we're ready regardless of what Mother Nature brings our way. I think that um, we, we will be ready and we want our riders to be ready as well. So I think the big thing for us is we've, we've tried to consolidate our communication, metrowinter.com. If you go there, you have access to transit alerts, you have access to current routing, you have access to whatever is going on at that moment in time. If you use that, uh, I think you'll be lockstep with us and the goal will be to keep the city and the, the region moving. Last question. Can, you, yeah. can anyone speak to the how soon you're supposed to clear your sidewalks? What are the rules around that? There's no timeline, but your obligation is to clean. But remember, we want everyone to be safe. And I know in this day of instant everything, microwaves, instant communication, people think somehow there's going to be wands and elves and things will appear overnight. It won't. So people have to be smart and use common sense. Your obligation is to get those sidewalks clear, but we want people to be safe. People need to stay safe, be patient, be kind. Um, and if you're not ready, get ready. We're going to do our best. You know, you talk about the number of hours and the people you see behind us. Last year, the Parks Department not only opened two community centers that served many, many people who were experiencing homelessness, but their crews went and, and cleared sidewalks that weren't in parks. Same with public utilities and city light. Um, we work closely with Metro. Seattle Public Schools, as you noted, we saw that there was a disconnect there, so we've been working to make sure that we're connected there. Um, so we will do all we can, and really, we, government is only part of the equation. Really, it's up to every one of us in our communities to make sure that we're doing our part to stay safe, um, to be patient, to be kind, to look out for our neighbors, and we'll get through it. Thanks very much.